Now we turn right and onto the Poggio proper for uh, Vincenzo Nibali. It's been rising a little bit on the way to it, but this is the Poggio proper as we uh, launch ourselves up the final climb of the day. 3.7% average, as I said, maximum of 8%. And it's going to feel very, very difficult indeed for, uh, for Vincenzo Nibali. What sort of a gear can he hang on to and get on top of? as they pile himself up then. He's only got 11 seconds, John. Would you uh, care to speculate at this moment? Well, I think it's game over pretty shortly for Nibali. We can see here, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, movement on the front of the bunch, and, uh, you know, the, the forced attack, I think, Nibali will be closed down very quickly. As you can see, he's coming down to eight seconds inside the 10 kilometers to go. Uh, you know, there's the riders now with the sprinters. They are going to try and keep, you know, a good, strong pace on the front of the group, and the riders who do not want to go to the finish, they are going to try and go in the attack, and who will be the first one. Philip Gilbert, I think, you know, he's going to be concerned. So uh, we see Van Ava and Matt there. They are certainly going to try and do something because they have to really put the sprinters in difficulty. A brave, a valiant effort from Vincenzo Nibali, but it's uh, all to, uh, for nothing. Well, not for nothing. It was a wonderful uh, effort and fair play to him for trying it. But uh, Vincenzo Nibali has been dragged back to the group. Lotto Belisol doing the uh, finishing work. Trek Factory Racing looking to set up Fabian Cancellara. And if you were to, uh, to bet, well, the attack's already starting to come. I was going to say, what's the best point on the Poggio to attack? The softener uppers are happening already. Is this Cancellara? No. Vincenzo Nibali is uh, called to account. I think it's Rast from Trek Factory Racing that has uh, drilled it off the front and is trying to set something up for Camp Fabian Cancellara. This is a nice car to play for Trek Factory Racing as uh, Rast charges off the front and gets a significant advantage when is the best part is time to go sean well i think it's uh, probably a little bit early yet if you're thinking of going all the way to the finish we can see the track factory with rash they're probably just trying to set it up make it difficult for everybody and in that case cancellara can you know put in an attack in that final 1500 meters of the climb now who's this coming across cannondale look to try and uh, put a rider up there as well There is a party on Valvoli. Could it be called Brelli? Yep, it's definitely a party on Valvoli. Ryder has a little look behind. Rast has nothing to offer there. The group behind satisfied that that's not a rider they need to worry about. So this uh, very brave move. Great to see this team. It's Bataglin, Enrico Bataglin. Took a great stage victory in uh, Giro d'Italia last year. Almost. Uh, running a little bit wide on that corner, and that allows Rast to get back onto his wheels. So he lost a couple of seconds there. So Enrico Bataglin has decided to uh, pitch for glory here in Milan San Remo. Within the final 10 kilometers, a dangerous one as all the favorites look at each other. Are they gonna let this one go to the line? Surely not. No, I don't think uh, the sprinters will want that, but uh, we can see Lotto Bellasola doing their best here at the moment uh, with Greipel in second position. And of course, you know, the sprinters' teams are not going to try, try and follow up the attack of battling. They're just going to keep making a strong pace on the front because if you do that with your sprinters, you're going to put them in the red very quickly. Uh, but uh, battling putting in a real, you know, strong attack here. Nibali's gone. Great effort at the back of the group. And uh, Ronaldo Noscentini too. Uh, no longer involved in the big way. I wonder will Nibali try to uh, drag himself back up onto the group. Noshantini showing a little bit less uh, enthusiasm. Nibali has played his card. Turned out not to be the winning one. 20 seconds advantage now for Bataglin and Rast up front. Rast, the uh, Swiss rider with Trek Factory Racing, trying to set something up for his uh, Swiss teammate, Fabian Cancellara. At the moment, the other teams are not biting. Is this Puccio again on the front for uh, Sky Pro Cycling? Taking responsibility for closing this one down. They can't afford to mess because uh, 6.1 kilometer from the line will be the point at which they reach the top of this hill. So just a kilometer and a half to go on the Poggio. And it goes up in a series of ramps, Sean. 
Yes, um, it certainly does. And, uh, you know, we're in the section now where it's a little bit easier. Then it kicks up again as you get closer to the top. And we can see uh, it's Patty Ling, who is the one who's pushing on here. And on the front of the bunch, uh, it's uh, Sky who are setting the pace. It was uh, Puccio, but also Ben Swift was very close there. Uh, so they're the ones who are controlling pace on the front of the group. But uh, any moment, I think, there will be somebody of the favourites who do not want to allow this one to get to a sprint has to go in the attack. Well, the spectators at the side of the road watching uh, with interest and wondering who those two riders on Gilbert. the front. And Gilbert has decided to go for it in a big way. And Gilbert is uh, launching himself off the front. For how much uh, longer will he be allowed? Daniele Benati has seen the danger and looks to react. Benati, Daniele Benati, the Italian, good sprinter as Philippe Gilbert launches himself off the front a couple of years ago he would have uh, disappeared into the distance but he immediately closes down Rast and Bataglin on the front so brave effort comes to nothing for those two riders they don't quite get to the top of the podium uh, with the important advantage and here comes another one and it's got to come from uh, Belkin well just closed down just at the crucial moment there was it Lars Peter Nothag Nordhag looks to do something. Katusha also. Paulini. Oh, that's got to be uh, Paulini. Who else with those uh, with a characteristic uh, stocky figure? And of course the, the hot tea worked. The, yeah, the hot tea obviously got those hands uh, warming up. The legs are warming up. I think every part of everyone's body is pretty warm at the moment. On this final climb of the Poggio, Paulini on the front drills it for uh, Katusha. His attack not uh, proving effective enough, but he'll keep it going as long as he can to make it as difficult as possible for other riders behind. And other riders behind include uh, one or two riders from Sky. Was that Boston Hagen at the back of the group that yes, seemed to be was. suffering? That's bad news for him because he needs to be in great form at the Poggio to try and shake off the sprinters. What other sprinters are managing to survive this onslaught as Lars Peter Nothag goes for a big one? They reach the top of the Poggio. Now the descent to come. A few bike lengths advantage and an opportunity for the, uh, the suicide descenders to really go for it in a big way. And drill it down this uh, extremely technical descent as we see riders desperate to try and uh, cling back on and i wonder was that andre greipel at the back of